It was also a pleasure for us to present the international addressing system in Forgan's technology. For those who weren't there yesterday, Philippe Collard, a content provider whom I believe I saw in the room, gave us a presentation that was very interesting on the use of Frogan's sites from the standpoint of a content provider. And he mentioned the benefits of an addressing system and a content publication system that could be international especially for a Westerner, to be able to deal with Asian markets, Arabic, Russian, African markets, and the like. In actual fact, thanks to Benjamin, whom I will be receiving by my side in just a few moments, we'll realize that the addressing system in Fogans technology, as we said before, is truly international, global, in the sense that it is there to be used by everyone, regardless of your country. As Stefan said, it did not exist with the web, in the sense that see, if people did not use Latin characters, and uh, they could not therefore use their own writing system. I'm thinking of Chinese, uh, what be it uh, simple or traditional, or Arabic script, Hebrew, Japanese, Korean, the Indians with Devanagari. But I won't go into any further details. I believe that Bonjama the head of technical specifications at OP3FT will now be presenting research and development around this addressing system. As we said before, there are some international uses on the internet today, but it is tru truly designed from the very beginning for an international use. Benjamin, I can see you. Ah, here you are. So you are the head of technical specifications for OP3FT. And for my greatest pleasure, you are American. <laughs> That's not my fault. So you prepared the presentation on technical specifications. I will let you present your work with the entire R&D team and the technical specification team. I'll let you begin, of course, by presenting Yourself and your wallet. Open. I'll switch back to English. Uh, my name is Ben Fister. I have the dubious honor of being the old man on the team here at OP3FT. Uh, you can tell by the color of my hair. Uh, but it's, uh, I've had the, the great pleasure of working with the team at OP3FT for a little over a year now. Uh, it's a very exciting project to be involved in. Um, I've been working in the computer industry for 30, 30 or so years, both in France and the United States and worked previously as a translator and a technical writer. Um, the, as uh, Jean-Emmanuel has said, uh, and other people as well, one of the most important parts of the, the Froggins project is it is an international project. We are not aiming just for users in France or in Europe or in North America or in or any, any other particular region. It is really a truly international project for users around the world. So if we can get the first slide going maybe. <coughs> the, the primary goal of the international Froggins address pattern uh, is just that, to, so that users from any country can write in their own writing system uh, with their own characters uh, the name of their site uh, or network. Uh, this, this first slide is one that was presented at the previous Froggins technology conference by my colleague Wail who's the head of research here at, at um, OP3FT. Uh, as you can see, we have site names. Uh, the the Frogan's address pattern is uh, rather unusual. The first feature that strikes me is its simplicity. We have basically a network name, <clears throat> a star, an asterisk, and a site name. There aren't too many slashes or dots or various levels. It's just a very, very straightforward system. Uh, the characters... Uh, as we say are in other in various languages. It can be written from left to right, as you see on the left side of the screen, or from right to left for Arabic and Hebrew. Um, so there are quite a few uh, writing systems available. 
Merci. <coughs> Uh, and because of this unusual pattern, it's a very easily identifiable uh, system uh, that someone can see straight away. We're talking about a Froggins uh, site or a Froggins network. It won't be mixed up with an email address, for example, or a domain name. Next slide, please. So one of the uh, great parts about the Froggins address pattern is the freedom it gives to people who want to create their own site or their own a network to choose exactly the name they want in their language written the way they want to have it. If they want to use uppercase characters, they can. Uh, that causes a few technical challenges when we came up, when you had to write the technical specification, but we've got them sorted out. So we give uh, the ability of really having a truly uh, personalized address by having both uppercase and lowercase characters. <clears throat> oh, however, along with the freedom of choosing uh, whatever languages, whatever characters you choose in your address, uh, there is a danger of confusing the end user. Uh, there are various types of confusion that we have to be aware of. Uh, one is between characters in a given writing system. You have on the top right of the screen there, three characters from the Latin writing system. Uh, they all look very much alike. The, the uppercase I, the digit one, and the lowercase l are very similar and very confusing from a visual standpoint. It would be easy for a user if they want to click on a site the name that was called Hello. You could write that H-E-L-L-O, or you could write H-E-1-1-O, -one -one or H-E-I-I-O, and it would be very hard for the user to tell which site he or she is going to. That's within a given, within only one writing system. <coughs> Second type of problem uh, concerns characters in two different writing systems. Here we have two letters, A and A. Uh, I defy you to be able to tell me which, which uh, easily uh, which, which uh, alphabet those come from. Uh, the, one of them is, is Latin, the other Cyrillic. Well, we give you a little hint here on the side, but otherwise it's a, there's a real danger. Uh, this is a well-known example we've talked about, it's been talked about before. PayPal, for example, someone could have a link to a site for PayPal. One written with the, using the all letter all Latin letters, another one with the, replacing one of the A's in PayPal with a Cyrillic letter, and the person clicking the link, he or she could be sent to the wrong address. So we want to make sure with our rules for Froggins addresses that we, to ensure the security of users, because users are our first first concern at OP3FT. We want to make sure that they didn't end up on the wrong site. A third type of problem concerns uh, confusion between letters in two different writing systems, for, uh, or, or two different writing systems for the same language. Chinese, for example, as Jean-Emmanuel mentioned earlier on, has two versions. You can write either in simplified Chinese or in traditional Chinese. Um, and we have to make, have the same way of uh, identifying addresses and avoiding confusion between addresses written using a different form of the same ideogram. For example, here we have two ideograms one in simplified, one in traditional Chinese, which they look different, but they mean pretty much the same thing. So those are called variants, and it's another type of possible confusion for users. So we had to address this question of, of uh, variants. Uh, the, the purpose of all this uh, is to avoid spoofing, this, this practice of sending someone to a, an unintended website or a, a frog site. Next slide, please. <coughs> Uh, luckily for us, uh, there are quite a few international organizations who have been working on all these problems for international identifiers for several years. We do not pretend at the OP3FT to have the expertise required in all of the various writing systems that Jean-Emmanuel enumerated earlier on. Uh, we cannot have the, the next expertise in Chinese and Arabic and Latin and Italian and German and uh, the Vanagari, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we have designed our specifications to be based on existing international standards that is, that is relied and built upon the work of expert groups from around the world who have in the past published results. Uh, this work is, a lot of it's been published in the past. There's more work which is in progress. Uh, for example, the ICANN uh, is in the process of forming generation panels that are uh, providing and preparing rules for uh, verifying the characters that can be used in a given uh, 
writing system uh, for a particular language. So we are, uh, you design an, an open standard, which is based on those existing international standards, and which also can be updated and can uh, incorporate new work as the results are published by international organizations. Next slide, please. <laughs> so to make this happen, to make the system both stable a system that is both stable and, and uh, able to evolve over time. We've divided uh, the, this, our specifications into two parts. One called IFAP, the International Frogman's Address Pattern, which was published in March of uh, this year, defines the basic pattern of the Froggins Address, the structure, the network name, star, site name, a few rules about the order of characters, etc. But it doesn't decide to say anything about the languages involved. It's totally language independent. Um, it doesn't talk about security rules. It talks more about the pattern of the address. Uh, it's designed, IFAP is designed to be stable over the long term, not to evolve very frequently. The re there's a reason for that, in that IFAP is, is this, the, the data required to, uh, to analyze an, an IFAP address uh, is included in every single player that's loaded around the world. We, we don't want to, on the Froggins player, we don't want to require people to have to uh, update their player every, every three months when there's any security leak. So that's, uh, that's part of the IFAP design, is to be stable over the long term. Uh, FAC, on the other side, the, the Froggins address composition rules, is the new standard. That this one's going to be published in about 15 days or so. We're working hard to get it done. Um, it concerns security, it's language related, it provides specific rules for each language. For example, what are the employable characters you can use in Devanagari or in Hebrew, for example. Uh, it will be updated frequently as, as needed to when, when new results are published by international groups. Um, it will also uh, be updated in, if we have find security leaks, Some, someone comes up with a clever way of, of Introducing a character that, that uh, perhaps can be used for spoofing, we'll try to close that hole as quickly as possible. Finally, <clears throat> there's a question of uh, who it's implemented by. Uh, the uh, FACR is implemented by the FCR operator, the Froggins Core Registry operator. They're the, the unit we were talking about, Stefan was talking about them a few minutes ago. Uh, the FCR operator is responsible for maintaining the central registry worldwide for all Froggins addresses. So I think that's we've covered pretty much the, the slide there. Next slide, please. Here's a brief overview of a summary of the table of contents of the specification. I won't bore you with all the details, uh, but basically there's, we have, in order to, to, to define the rules for the composition rules for Froggins addresses, we had to come up with a couple of new concepts. One of them concerns linguistic categories. In order to develop rules for the various writing systems worldwide, and to have rules that can be maintained, that can be evolved over time, we had to split them up, all the world's languages, into what we call linguistic categories. We defined 10 LCs, 10 linguistic categories, to get started with. Um, so we have rules for each of those linguistic categories, for the employable characters, and for the arrangement rules, how you can form an address within one of those languages, one of those categories. We also talk about convergence forms. We saw earlier on the problems involved, the dangers of, of confusability. So we define forms which will simplify the, the, the problems and, and avoid uh, the spoofing by generating a particular form of the address and the seeking for a given address. Is there, does that address converge with, does it look like another address? If it does, well then if someone's already registered the other address, then you cannot register a second confusable address. That's the basic principle. And finally, uh, this is a standard feature of all specifications at the OP3FT. Uh, we, we not only write the specification describing the requirements of the system, but we also try to help out the poor guy who has to implement this stuff. It's pretty complicated to go through the 800 odd pages of uh, the Unicode standard to figure out what are IFAP compliant addresses, or what, what language rules apply, what are the employable characters for the, a given language category. Uh, to help those guys out, uh, if, you, you know, if you want, you can go ahead and write your own code and develop everything from scratch. 
But if you if you rather, we've, we've actually done the work for you. So you can use the lookup tables, which are data tables included in our specs, with a list of all the characters you can use in Devanagari or in, in Hebrew or whatever language you're writing your address in. And also we give pseudocode to help you implement the, the code itself. So you can then write program in C or Java or whatever language you like to carry out that code. Uh, these specs are all written uh, using a format designed uh, by the IETF group, uh, in the RFC format, basically. Uh, all in ASCII makes it rather difficult for us, the writers, to present information because we don't have nice bold and italic characters and with lots of things that are missing. Uh, uh, automatic links in the text, for example. We can't have those. But at least the, the standards are in a standard international format, clearly understandable by all. Last slide, please. And this last slide presents a bit more of the, the details of the, uh, the FACR, the Froggen's Address uh, Composition Rules. Uh, we have circles here. Each circle represents basically a linguistic category. We have on the top left, Latin, Cyrillic over here on the right. Uh, within each uh, language category, you have a set of valid network names, VNN. A valid network name is a name which complies with the employable character rules and the arrangement rules for your linguistic category. Uh, now, you'll notice some of these are clearly dis distinct circles because there's not much similarity between a uh, Froggen's network name in Cyrillic or in Arabic. Here you have an example of, for example, in Latin we have the address bonjour. Here's a translation into Russian of that address written in the Cyrillic alphabet. And those two, two characters, I don't know about for you, but for me those two network names are not very confusable. They don't, they don't really converge. Um, there are other cases, however, when things get more complex. We have certain what we call overlapping linguistic categories. For example, the Chinese and the Japanese uh, languages can both be written using the Han writing system developed in China a few thousand years ago. And uh, c there's a single character which can appear in both the Latin or both the Chinese and the Japanese linguistic category. That can lead to potential confusion as well. So we develop rules defining how to manage those types of situations. Um, well, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll stop there. I've probably gone over my time. Uh, do you have any questions? I'll, I'll pass the, the word back to John Madrid. Thank you, Benjamin. And uh, thanks to FACR and IFAB specification, uh, technical specification, it is possible to have a new addressing system totally international. Thank you very much. Stefan, can you help me? Because uh, my, uh, my sure. English is not well. Uh, <laughs> you mean it's ill. Thank you very much. <laughs> do you want, uh, do you have questions, specific questions? No, no, thanks. Uh, if the public have questions, it's okay, good. Okay, so let, let's open it up. Uh, thanks, Ben, for, for um, clarifying a lot of uh, things that uh, maybe some of us know, but it's always good to get a refresher on this and to, uh, uh, I mean, we are in, in, uh, an area of complexity, uh, but also a key area in the techno techno technological development uh, of this uh, um, new uh, type of uh, uh, internet site, because obviously um, being able to uh, use the system in your own language is key, uh, both, as you've said, in terms of security but also because we are a user-facing technology and project. So thank you for that. Uh, perhaps I can uh, once again open it up uh, for questions from the floor. Um, if anyone has a question, once again, please raise your hand. You don't have to ask it in English. If you're more comfortable in French, uh, Ben will understand. Or Stefan can answer questions in Chinese, Arabic, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, you have to do that at OP, OP3 FT. You have to learn all the languages that we service. So I'm now fluent in Cyrillic. Any questions? I see a couple of hands, so let me move down. Uh, hi, Ben. Um, that was a really, really fascinating uh, presentation. 
Um, one of the, uh, it's, it's for me one of the sort of critical aspects of this whole technology and, and one of the things you talked about which I find uh, quite fascinating are these convergence forms and how they will actually function. And does it mean to say that if I um, wanted to uh, register, okay, if I wanted to register an address with um, star hello, that I have in effect uh, blocked out any other user ever being able to register HE110, HEII0, H E and all those other letters that you mentioned. I mean, so uh, that, so that it, if I've understood your rule correctly, uh, you're you're sort of immediately blocking out uh, whole other future users, future registrants uh, from um, uh, registering confusingly similar uh, addresses with any other sort of similar uh, letters. That's exactly right, Tom. You've hit the nail on the head. That's precisely the reason we come up with these these rules. Uh, one nuance is you said perpetually block the address. That's not quite true. The address is blocked perpetually as long as you, as the holder of the address, uh, renew your, your license uh, to maintain that address. If after, let's say, a year you decide you don't want to renew the fee for your, your, your site, then you lose the address, and that address becomes available to someone who wants to create HE110, for example. Thank you very much, Amir. I see. Joe? Um, what happens if uh, something slips through the cracks? For instance, um, you have, you have uh, made provisions for a hello with uh, two capital I's in the middle or with a zero at the end, um, but in some language that no one in this town understands, um, there's a confusable and, uh, well, two different registrants are find that they're battling it out over what they believe to be the same, uh, the same address. Okay, good question, Joe. Um, th two things, one is th something I did not say, which was when you want to register an address with the Froggen's core registry, the first thing you must say is what linguistic category your address concerns. You want to see if it concerns the Latin category or the Devanagari, or the, you saw the list earlier on. We have 10 different categories corresponding to several languages. Now remember, in Latin, for example, we have more or less 500 languages within that one category. French, German, Italian, English, I think, as well, are all written with the Latin alphabet. So that's the first thing. You have to say which, else, which language the category you're aiming for. Second thing is, uh, we, it is possible that something could slip through the cracks. As I said, we do not, have, we do not know all of the world's languages within OP3FT. Uh, we do rely on experts, but also people, when they want to become an address holder or even a user, have to sign the Froggen's te Technology User Policy, FTUP, which gives uh, quite a few requirements and responsibilities for, to have the, the, the ability to use Froggen's addresses. You must follow certain rules, and if, for example, you are obviously attempting to find a devious address Maybe an address has been copyrighted by someone else. Uh, that you will then there's a dispute resolution policy, a second feature that we have at the at the OP3FT, to avoid or to help people solve those kind of cases. You'll be having later on tonight, I believe, a talk about from someone from the, the address resolution uh, policies, this dispute resolution policies. Ben, thanks very much. Just uh, perhaps I can just venture a stupid question. Uh, and ask, uh, we have a number of uh, linguistic categories that you've described, but there are so many languages that humans use. Um, is it possible to cover them all? Uh, good question. We do not, for the moment, we've, just, we've taken, we created 10 linguistic categories which cover the world's most often used languages. When we decided to create these categories, we based them on the number of people who read or write that language worldwide. So it's just not, a, it wasn't a question of, uh, we prefer Arabic over, over some other language. Uh, no, it's because it's the, the language is the most often used. So we've covered the top 10 in the initial release of uh, FACR 1.0. However, it is not impossible that in future releases, uh, we will add more linguistic categories, if that is requested by users, for example. 
Ben, thank you very much. Let's end it here. Uh, once again, thank you for explaining that to us. <laughs>